Thanks for checking out Poolkit. In this video, we'll look at why pooling is important in every game project and why you should choose Poolkit as your solution. To better understand the kind of problems that Poolkit can solve, let's take a look at this example scene. I have a spooner set up here that's instantiating these grey cubes. When instantiation happens, we get these. These purple spikes in the profiler. These spikes represent memory allocations that the garbage collector needs to clean up. This can cause hiccups in gameplay and general lag. So in simple terms, the way pooling works is to create a bunch of game objects beforehand and recycle those instead of instantiating new ones all the time. In other words, we create a pool of objects. I have a yellow cube set up in this pool already. I'm now going to update the spooner to use the yellow cube from the pool instead of instantiating the old grey cubes we were using before. Pool kit spooners can automatically detect if a prefab is part of a pool and will know if objects can be spawned instead of instantiated. We should notice a significant improvement. So, if we have a look at the profiler, and I'll just pause the game. Let's take a look at the very first frame which is about here. This spike happens when the pool is created and this does require some garbage collection. But after that, we have no garbage collection that needs to be cleaned up at all. We have zero allocations per frame. And in a nutshell, this is what pooling does. It gets rid of all of those memory allocations wherever possible and goes a long way in improving the performance of your games. I'm using the WebGL demo here to show how we can compare the speed between instantiating and destroying a thousand cubes against Poolkit spawning and despawning a thousand cubes. Poolkit can process this in 9 milliseconds, whereas instantiating takes 16 milliseconds. It looks like Poolkit's doing about 33% better on average. So, why should you use Poolkit over other pooling systems? Firstly, one of Poolkit's unique features is the ability to use different pool types. This is a Poolkit term referring to the internal data set. Most pooling systems are built using a dynamic list to manage the pool's data. The main benefit of using a dynamic list is that it allows you to add new instances to your pool at runtime. This is great for creating new bullets, lasers and other objects where you're not quite sure what number you're going to need but you want the pool to be able to grow dynamically with your needs. In addition to the dynamic list, Poolkit offers the fixed array, which is faster than the dynamic list. In fact, it's likely to be the fastest way of looping through any dataset. So if you're creating a pool where you know how many objects you're going to need, the fixed array is always going to outperform the list. As other pooling systems don't split up their data structures in this way, this will result in a significant performance boost only available with Poolkit. And as demonstrated in this example scene, you can have both types of pools running side by side. Poolkit has another great feature called Pool Protection. Pool Protection allows you to accidentally destroy instances without breaking the pool. So you may have used other pooling systems in the past that uh, when they didn't have any pool protection and you try to delete an instance, uh, this would happen. So in pool kit, you have the option to turn on pool protection. So when this happens, I can try to destroy a single instance or every single instance at once, pool kit automatically detects it and recreates your pool on the fly. Pool protection is great for people new to pooling or programming in general and offers that extra peace of mind. More experienced users have the option to turn off pool protection in order to get more of a performance boost. If you have a global pool that you want to create as soon as the game starts, this can be done automatically with Poolkit. All you need to do is go to the Poolkit menu and select set up global pools and you drag and drop the global pools that you want into the list. As soon as you press play, all of the global pools you created will be set up automatically. In Poolkit, features are decentralized as much as possible. For example, every prefab in a pool can have its own sizing options. Instances are managed independently. Features such as lazy preloading and automatic despawning happen on a per prefab basis. 
and more advanced functionality can be set up to configure notifications, delegates and events in the same way. Poolkit offers a great way to quickly inspect and debug your pools using the statistics screen. This screen gives you an overview of how many instances have been created and helps you determine the size of your pools to optimize memory usage. Other than Poolkit's unique and optimized take on pooling, Poolkit has been designed to help you build great games and shave hours off of routine tasks. At the time of release, we believe Poolkit is equipped with the most powerful spawner and despawner features on the asset store. You can use spawners to automatically create enemies, effects and other objects, or to set up the core functionality for weapons and more. Poolkit offers two built-in approaches for despawning your objects. Firstly, let's look at automatic despawning, a feature that happens at the pool's prefab level. In this scene, we've set up a Poolkit spawner to handle some fireworks. We want the fireworks to play and despawn itself after a short countdown. Poolkit lets you do this visually without any scripting at all or within the editor. Other automatic despawning modes are also available to help with audio and other things. The second approach to despawning allows you to use Poolkit's dedicated despawner component. In this scene, we have a pool that is managing three prefabs. All three of these prefabs are using despawner components. We have the main big rocks prefab, the mini rocks prefab, and the rock dust particle system. So if we click into the main rock prefab, we'll see that as well as having a rigid body and collider component, we also have a pool kit despawner component attached to. The despawner allows you to choose from various events that determines how the game object will be despawned. In this case, we're using a collider event, which allows us to check if the instance is collided with another object. Right now, we're checking the game object's own collider. We can also set up various options and filter out collisions by tag, layers or both. Even though all of this is great, the really cool and powerful feature here is chain spawning. Chain spawning allows you to spawn an unlimited number of new objects when this object is despawned. This effectively becomes its own spawner. There are powerful controls over how the new object should be positioned, rotated and scaled, and you can even grab the last collision position if you're using collider events. You are also able to choose which objects will be spawned depending on the last event. The main rocks are set up to spawn the dust particle and the mini rocks prefab. If we click into the mini rocks prefab, we can see that it is configured to despawn after 5 seconds. Similarly, if we click into the rock dust particle system, we'll see that this is set to despawn when the particle system finishes. This offers amazing power in setting up your objects and also works seamlessly with the API. Thanks so much for taking the time to check out Poolkit. It's clear this isn't just another pooling system. Poolkit is easy to use and offers truly unique and innovative features that will help you not only optimize, but build great games. Once you try Poolkit, you'll likely use it in every project from here on out. Feel free to try out the Poolkit web demos, documentation and other videos. If you have any questions, I'm always available at the forum or on the other end of an email. Cheers.